I'm here in Kenai, Alaska, getting ready to go out on a brown bear bow hunt. What a dream. I'm just so thankful to be standing here, and I look forward to what this week is going to hold in the days ahead. I've been dreaming about this literally all my life, and man, it's just been a blessing in the last several years to be able to check off several bucket list items, but this has been like at the top of the bucket list for a long time. So here I am. I'm so thankful to God. Look forward to a great adventure ahead. A couple of years ago, I hunted caribou in the far northern part of Alaska along the coast in the open tundra. And now I'm in the far southern part of Alaska along the coast, and the terrain is just so different. It's like thick, thick woods and rolling hills, really beautiful in a different way. After riding on a four-wheeler for about seven miles through these winding roads, we walk the last bit of distance up to the box blind where we'll be spending a lot of hours in the days ahead. They have a few different box blinds like this that are elevated looking over bait stations. And they do that because the brown bears in this area are super difficult to find in this thick terrain if there weren't a bait station to draw them in. Well, here we are, the first night in Alaska. I'm so fired up. Got my buddy Caleb over here, guide extraordinaire. And we're set up waiting for a big brown bear to come in. It's a beautiful day. The temperature is nice and cool and it's overcast. So we're ready to spend a lot of hours in here and just hope that something comes in. And here's the view we're going to be looking at for a long time. After being on stand for about four hours, I got super excited because I caught movement off to my left and thought it was a big brown bear, but it turned out to be a moose. Still pretty cool to see. On the second day, we decided to check out a different blind and it was nice to get a, a change of scenery. And we stayed there for day three as well. On day four, we went back to the original stand, and so far we haven't seen any bears, but we're thinking the activity is going to start picking up because there was a really late winter this year. Hunting inside a blind is not really my favorite way to hunt, but man, it's nice when there's rainy days like this to just protect us from the elements. And man, the activity really started to pick up. There was a hot sow in the area, and so the bears were really moving. The wind was in our favor, so this bear didn't spook from us, but we think it caught wind of a much bigger bear in the area and skedaddled out of there. About an hour later, another one came in, and we think this was looking for the hot sow because it actually didn't come into the bait, but just was circling around, scenting the area, and looking for something. We were really tempted to shoot it, but it just didn't look quite big enough for us. Early the next morning, a huge sow with two really big cubs came into the site. And this is one of the cubs that was feeding there. And then the sow started making this, this barking, snorting sound like an alert. And gathered her cubs together and then they just darted out of there.
And that's when we got excited. We thought, okay, something's big in the area that's scaring her away. And then we started hearing that, that bear making that same sound and getting closer and closer to us. And then we saw the big one start lumbering in. And then he, he stood up on his hind legs and rubbed his back on this tree, which is just a sign of dominance and marking their territory. And man, my heart was just pounding out of my chest as I grabbed my bow. It was understandably challenging for Caleb to play the dual role of guide as well as videographer. And so unfortunately, you can see the bottom part of the screen is kind of white. That's just because the, the, the tripod wasn't high enough to, uh, to get over the edge of the blind. And you can see the reflection of the blind a little bit in there. But hey, it's all good. At first I thought he was turning around, it was leaving, but then he just circled around and came right into the bait. Arrow shot placement on a brown bear is a lot more difficult than you may think, especially in low light and at distance. And here in this video, it's all zoomed in and brightened up, and so it's pretty easy to see the crease behind their shoulder. But with the, the bait there, they're kind of he's kind of quartering to me, and in the actual light conditions and actual distance, man, it was really difficult to tell where to put that arrow. And, and so, man, I was kind of sweating because you don't want to hit that shoulder. Let's take a look at the shot again from a GoPro with actual distance and actual lighting conditions. The shot looked really good and so we gave it about 90 minutes and then climbed down out of the stand and started to pursue it. Thanks, Caleb. Nice. Yeah. Dude. Beautiful. Look man. at that. God. Man, look at those claws. Very nice. <laughs> look at that head. 
Jeez. Good job, man. Look at that. Gosh. Man, I wouldn't want to wrangle with those claws. Are those teeth? What a beast. Yeah. And you can see the blood there. That's where the uh, the blood flow 1.25 went in. And man, he didn't go far at all. Awesome. I'm here in Kenai, Alaska. And man, I've had an incredible week. I've been hunting all week with RWS Guide Services. And my guide has been Caleb Martin. He's an incredible guide, done a fantastic job. We've been out here uh, Monday, and now it's Friday. And the first three days, we really didn't see anything. Then Thursday, the action started to heat up, and we we're spending the entire night out here in the blind so we could stay as late as possible and then also hunt first thing in the morning. But uh, Thursday, it started to change, and a bunch of bears came in on Thursday night, all brown bears. Didn't see any black bears this week, and uh, but none of those were quite what we were looking for. And then Friday morning, woke up at, at 4 after just getting a couple hours of sleep, and, and, uh, and then the sow came in with two really big cubs and we were watching them, checking them out, and then something really spooked her, and she skedaddled off, and we knew a boar was around the corner. And so then this bad boy just came lumbering in and came right to 32 yards, and I put a smack on him with, uh, with the Bowtech CP28. I was using the new DeadX Bow Hunting Blood Flow one and a quarter inch broadhead, and man, it just did the job, and this bear didn't go far at all, and here it is, all piled up. My first brown bear, and in Alaska, really thankful for RWS Guide Services, especially thankful for Caleb Martin and all his, his hard work, and really thankful to God for giving me this incredible adventure. The skull was officially measured as 25 and 2 16 inches. Check out these claws. White claws in this area are super rare. Usually they're black. And so it was really impressive to see these pearly whites. Give me a whole new appreciation for the drink White Claw. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy that a lot more in the future thinking about this. And you're looking at the real Bigfoot right here. Check out my other video tests of the Blood Flow Broadhead by Dead Expo Hunting and feel free to use my discount code LUSK5 to save five bucks on any pack. So we got the portable winch tied to the back of our four-wheeler. <laughs> We're pulling this thing up in the bottom of this huge ravine. Pretty impressive setup they have here. We'd never be able to get that bad boy up. And they estimated the overall measurement of the bear was right at nine feet square. 